know the sound is working. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, North America. Uh, this is what, the 7th of November? Yes, the s no, not November, 7th of December. 7th of December 2021. And we're broadcasting from Liverpool, UK. And our theme today is let go and believe. Let go and believe is the theme. And the reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9. <clears throat> but before we go there, and um, before we say hello to everybody, let me just uh, look at the comments. Uh, no, not let me just give you some announcements first of all. Uh, this coming Friday, there will be no uh, broadcast, both morning and evening. Uh, we're renovating the uh, studio, upgrading the um, broadband. And, I, you know, just in case anything goes wrong, there's nothing worse than saying I'm going to be on on Friday and then find I can't get online. And I have to be there during the time, so I can't even go out on the iPhone and copy. So it'll be a long weekend. Isn't that nice? Long weekend. But to make up for it, on Sunday at 8 p.m., we have uh, Melinda Fish. And we'll be reviewing her new book, um, The River Is Here, second edition. It's the second edition. She wrote the first one in 1994. And she's revisiting some of the people that she wrote about in uh, 1994 with a few editions. <laughs> with a few editions. She's an excellent writer. Good writer. Really good at uh, making difficult things uh, palatable. Does that make sense? Does that, you know, that's a gift, isn't it? It's a gift. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. We'll be interviewing her. Uh, and it's 8 p.m. UK time, 3 p.m. North American time, so the Eastern Standard Time. So just so that you know that, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, tomorrow <coughs> is the Hangouts for the Partners, uh, and Steve uh, will be hosting that. And then Thursday, oh, by the way, that's at 7.30. I'm quoting UK times. That's, I think, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time for the partners on tomorrow, Wednesday. Thursday for the US and Canada will be at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. OK, and that's hosted by Gail Ann. And uh, you're welcome if you're a partner to come and join and chat. It's an informal time, time of fellowship, time to get to know one another. And you're welcome to that. Um, now, is there anything else? Um, today we're going to pray for Canada as a nation. I'm going to, when we go over to the globe, after I've said hello to the comment uh, to people that have joined us, um, we'll say hello to the, um, no, we'll say hello to the, <laughs> I'm getting all mixed up. Let me start again. We will go over to the comments and say hello to people. And then during that time, we'll have a two minute, um, what do we call it? Two minute prayer time, two minute quiet time. In other words, you'll hear nothing, but I think I've managed to put a little overlay over the globe so that when people are coming on new, uh, look at it and think, oh, there's no sound. And they'll see that and we'll have a flag of Canada up there as well. So just bear with me on that because it's all new to me. I'm learning. It's another step. Another step. But what's that word when they landed on the moon? <laughs> another step. <laughs> another step in the technology. <laughs> OK, so there we go. I think do I have all the announcements out of the way. I think I do. Um, is there anything else that I need to tell you? No, no. Oh, one more thing. Next week is our last week. There'll be no hangouts as well next. Well, there will be next week, but next week is our last week. For two weeks, we'll be breaking up for Christmas and New Year and then back on January the 3rd, morning and evening. I think I've got that now. I think I've got that bottled down really good. I think that went well, don't you? Do you think it went well? Anyway, there we go. <laughs> Let's go over and say hello anyway. 
and then we'll have a short time of prayer for two minutes for Canada specifically. We're going to focus, laser focus our prayers rather than just scattergun everything. We're going to laser focus on the nation of Canada, for people that we know in Canada, um, especially uh, uh, Jim and uh, Sue Dougal, uh, Mary Lou, Yvonne, um, and others. You know, we just pray Peter Jackson, Heather, um, I believe Jeremy Synod uh, from Toronto is down with it as well. So let's just pray for that nation as a whole, for protection, for healing, and for another visitation. Why not? Why not? Why not? I ask myself. Okay, let's go over there. Say hello to ding dongs and boings and haze and hoes. And to do that, I need to go to my. See, we've got the Canada flag already flying. Oh, Canada. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, Madeline from. Uh, I was going to say Kirby. <laughs> Sorry, Madeline. Uh, from Florida. Uh, Good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Barbara, who is suffering from vertigo. Lord, I just ask that you will touch Barbara. I noticed your, your post there today, Barb's, on uh, uh, Pew's, uh, what did you call it? Not conservatives, not con what do you call that? Jams, you were doing jams. It was a lovely photograph, made me really hungry uh, for some French stick and, oh, strawberry jam. Oh, I tell you. Uh, where to go today? So I may have to leave earlier. Well, let's just pray you can stick it out, stick it out, eh? Uh, Bob's eat that. God will just touch you. Joyce from way up north. Blessings from a very cold northern Illinois. The high today is 17 Fahrenheit. I bet you miss, I bet you miss North Carolina, Joyce. <laughs> the warm breezes. It's like flying from Canada to San Diego in February. Oh, I tell you. It's a real shock to the system. Uh, Anne Richardson, back for more. Good day, friends. Good day to you, Anne. It's so glad you could join us. I'm not ringing the bell today because I want to concentrate the bell for the prayer time, if that's okay. Um, Debbie Beck, uh, I'm glad things went well for you today, Deb. Uh, I, I, I meant to give you a call back, but it's been so busy running to the post office, back and forth, emails to do, you know. I uh, just didn't get it just slipped by the time slipped by uh, so anyway uh, what am I saying Joyce you're talking to Barbara Pugh yeah David Wilson good morning from deep south New Zealand you make that sound really uh, he sounds like the southern states there Dave are you on your tractor it's morning time isn't it very early in the morning um, good morning to you Dave welcome Julie Ashmore, good evening everyone from Derbyshire, England. Good evening to you, Julie. Major from Latvia, good evening, Major. Uh, to you too. And Kimo, uh, good evening. It was a good day today. You had a good day today, Kimo. Ours was a busy day today, but a lot of rain, a lot of cold. You know, one of those days you want to stay in and stay in bed. <laughs> anyway, uh, good evening to you, Kimo. Um, who else do we have on? Douglas Fern, our weather forecast man, Bramford, Ontario, Canada, minus four, 25 Fahrenheit, and light snow. Blessings and the sound is on. It's December. Yes, it's December. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that, Doug. Uh, on the rock, Janet checking in from Queenstown, New Zealand. Um, and we're at, yeah, Queenstown, New Zealand. Must be early in the morning for you as well, Janet. What are you saying, Debbie? Ooh, that'll be good hearing Melinda Fish. She's a hoot, Debbie. Her, hack, her accent. Oh, <laughs> when I first heard Melinda, I thought, is she putting that accent on? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it myself as well, Joyce. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, Debbie back. Progress. Oh, I don't know what you're meaning progress to there, Deb, because your comments come up later. It must have been something I said. Oh, you're talking about the software, aren't you? Diana uh, from uh, Barry. Blessings, everyone. Turning in from Barry. God bless you, Diane. Uh, what are you saying, uh, Douglas? Do, Doug, uh, announcements are 
good, yes, we need an announcement. Not that anybody listens to them, Doug. Nobody ever listens to the announcements. Uh, Linda Evelyn, uh, yes, good noon hour from cool, cloudy Indiana with warm Christmas lights inside, burning brightly. I've got to get my lights done. I've got half of them up there. God, I, want to, I want to light the driveway up so that any planes coming over, you know, I just want to light it. You know, the competition's getting really hot nowadays with all the neighbors uh, copying and trying to outdo me on the Christmas lights. <laughs> a bit like that uh, Chevy, Vase, Chevy, Chevy Chase uh, movie, you know, the Christmas lights. Uh, Rosie, good evening from a blustery Carter. Good evening to you, Rosie. Uh, I tell you what, Ben, um, as soon as Rosie goes off screen, it's automatic, you see. There you go. Uh, I wanna I wanna go into this two minutes of prayer. Now just stick with me a tick because I have to put up the uh, I have to put up the announcement. Don't adjust your sound. We are having a two minute silent prayer for Canada and friends, which will end at the sound of the bell and start at the sound of the bell. So here we go. I'm going to put the countdown on. There you go. And then I'm going to ding the bell. There we go. Father, we thank you for Canada. We thank you, Lord, for the nations. And we pray for a move of God from the West Coast to the East Coast, that people will own you as Lord. And we pray for the government there, Lord. We pray for good government in the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, now, I noticed somebody had put up... Um, who was it? Uh, Linda, you said, post pictures of lights when mission is accomplished. Hopefully that will be, be before Christmas, Linda, depending on the weather. And, you know, I need the anointing and the inspiration. And maybe Debbie can come round and give me a hand. <laughs> OK, there you go. Amen, amen, amen. OK, our subject today is let go and believe. And the reading is actually taken from Isaiah. And um, I'm going to see if I can get this up on the page here. Um, Isaiah 55, but we're going to pick it up. We, we looked at this this morning, but we're going to pick it up from verse. Um, let's see. I think it's verse 
six. I have to look, the print is so small on this. It's so small on this book. Uh, verse six, we're going to pick it up from. And let's just go down. I've got to just let me just take this uh, overlay up here. I say I'm getting used to it. So the countdown, there you go. Now, I've got to see if I can move it over and just get a closer version in here. Let me just see if I can come in. Just, just stick with me. We're going to look at God's mercy is greater than man's mercy. I think that should give you a better picture. There you go. Seek the Lord Yahweh when he makes himself approachable. We were talking about that this morning, that there are times in your life, you know, when you, and sometimes in the busy times when you're really busy, and suddenly you'll feel the presence of God. And that's a good time to just, you know, fire up a prayer, focus a prayer, pray for somebody, or give God thanks for something that he's done. Call upon him when you sense he is near. The wicked need to abandon their ways and, and sinful ones need to banish every evil thought. Let them return to Yahweh and they will experience, again, this is a point we touched on this morning, they will experience his compassionate mercy. Yes, let them return to God, for he will lavish forgiveness upon them. And then we have our text. For my thoughts about mercy, well, we're just coming up to it, verse 8. My thoughts about mercy are not like yours, your thoughts. And my ways are different from yours. And then it goes on to the text. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. Isn't that a wonderful text? It's one that we've, um, that's it. It's one that we've, we quote a lot, isn't it? My, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And I think, isn't that, isn't that part of our journey is to align the way we think to the way he does? Isn't part of the journey, uh, isn't part of the mission? Yes, I know when we come from an evangelical background, we're taught that part of the mission is to save the lost, which it is. But then we cannot save them. It needs the Holy Spirit. But God uses us to witness to people. But do you know what Paul wrote in his epistles to the churches? It was that they would become mature in Christ's image. In other words, we would take on fully, we would manifest fully the image of the Father. And in this verse here in the context, really it's talking about the mercy of God. It's talking about the forgiveness of God. That his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And when somebody offends us, you know, how often we, you know, we want to hit back, don't we? We want to uh, defend ourselves and hit back. But Jesus says, and the word of God says, you know, he is, he lavishes. Just think about that. Lavish. Lavishes his forgiveness on them. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that glorious? Isn't that a ding dong, a boing, a hey and a ho? That God should lavish his forgiveness, first of all, on us while we were yet sinners, while we weren't seeking him, while we were in rebellion. He drew us. He loved us. He lavished his forgiveness on us. And he expects us to do the same. Now, I also touched on, um, and I don't know how we got onto it this morning, but I touched on um, discernment. Discernment in the church, very much needed. And especially in the charismatic river even in the mystic, and more so in the mystic, because in the mystical sense, it's hidden, isn't it? It doesn't make sense. But there is a framework even in the mystical. 
we have to have a framework. We have to have a wine skin. A river has to have a bank to contain the flow. And um, there's an awful lot being spoken. And this was my meditation this morning. I just want to go on a little bit more about it because it's really neat. I really want to hammer this nail home. Um, the forgiveness, in keeping in line with forgiveness, keeping in line with mercy, keeping in line with the love of God. We people have to be a people that are able to discern the times and the seasons. In other words, there are times and seasons with God. We have to learn to discern the times and the seasons. And as I said earlier, we have to come into this place of maturity so that we can receive our heritage. Now, Paul talks about that in his epistles. He, he talks about, you know, I know there's this contradiction, isn't there, again? It's not really a contradiction. It's two things happening together. It's a creativeness, that letter B, two things happening together. Um, and, you know, in one part, we are to be childlike. You know, we are to come with childlike faith. But in the same level, we are to grow into maturity, able to discern between good and evil, able to discern what is from God, what is a counterfeit. Because one of the words, and especially on Sunday, uh, I think Margot delivered it excellently on Sunday, that running alongside what's taking place, we're talking about times and seasons, so we're talking about coming in We've crossed into a season. We've said that we've crossed over into a season. And uh, I think there's going to be an emphasis on cleaning the temple. <laughs> cleaning the temple of God. And that is both uh, from a corporate point of view and from an individual point of view. It always starts with us first, doesn't it? We can't put, you know, we have to take the what is it, the, the moat out of our own eye before we can help our brother, before we can help our sister. And even when we're helping somebody that is, you know, what does the word say? F falling that we have to be careful. We have to do it in a spirit of humility. And I think that's one going to be one of the emphasis in this uh, move that's already happening I think one of the emphasis is going to be, there's going to be an emphasis on humility. In other words, it's not going to be about building our own kingdom, our own ministry. There's going to be an emphasis of the love of God alongside this cleansing. Because, you know, you can have a wrong concept of love as well. You know, if I really love you, I'll correct you. You know, as a father... If I love my children, I correct them. It's part of loving, you know. Loving isn't always, you know, rubbing somebody on the back and encouraging them. Sometimes there's correction. And I think it's in Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God for correction. He gives a list, but one of them is for correction, for keeping the people of God online and God has given prophetic anointing usually prophetic anointing is not just something that's self-indulgent or something that the prophet wants to show off to make himself or herself you know look like the spiritual prophetic when it comes usually comes at its strongest when things are offline when the plumb line isn't straight and it's offline, then God raises up the prophets to speak to his people. Now listen, usually the tendency is that the people don't like what the prophet is bringing. They don't like what the prophet is bringing. But it is needed. There is needed a voice to speak. There is needed a trumpet to be sounded and I'm not sure what it's in Ezekiel, but in one of the one of the books, one of the major prophets, it says this: that if the watchmen don't sound the trumpet, don't sound the shofar, you know, when when the stuff coming against the city, 
then the blood is on their hands. So it's a very important thing. Now, I, I want to just talk about something else as well here. Um, you know, the joy. You know, one of my biggest frustrations is, and I'm sharing my heart with you, okay? I'm sharing my heart with you today. One of my biggest frustrations is when people try to whip up the joy. Do you understand what I mean? I never intended to get drunk. Never. I was very serious. I never intended to be funny. <laughs> but people think they've got to come on and get the thing, you know, G'd up. No, there's a very fine line. There's a very fine line. Don't, don't, don't feel like you have to act drunk or be drunk to be spiritual. Uh, is that correct? Am I, you know, am I treading on somebody's toes there? Yes, get drunk. By all means, get drunk in the spirit. By all means, drink large vats of the wine of the spirit. But don't forget what the purpose is. Don't forget what the purpose is. The purpose isn't just to get a high. <laughs> it isn't just to be self-consumed self-consumption it's to glorify god it's to glorify god it's to get you into the heavenlies now my problem was in those early years was it was clashing with religious structure <laughs> it was clashing with people saying one thing and doing another and god was using it the drunkenness getting me out of my mind so that I could say things I couldn't say sober. Very important, church, very important. Now, listen, you may say, well, you're a Dalton Thomas. No, you know what? Thomas got a bad deal. He got a bad deal. He forever got the nickname Doubting Thomas. But you know something? Thomas was devoted to the Lord, number one. Number two, he asked, he was the first one to acknowledge, out of all the disciples, he was the first one to acknowledge the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. But we give him doubting Thomas, we use it as a negative. When he really he was discerning, he said, look, I won't believe this until I see the prints in his hands and the hole in his side till I feel it, till I see it for myself. And come on, church, we've got to get to that place and not just accept everything that comes to us or is preached to us from, you know, I had this experience, I had that experience. But if you have this experience and that experience and you make your brother feel small, then you need to question. You need to question what spirit are we ministering in if it's not building up the body of Christ. Now, I have to say that. I have to say that. And really, uh, I, I really don't care whether, well, not that I don't care. Well, people say, well, should you, shouldn't you care? Well, it, the scripture says, Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, be careful for nothing. But I, I want to sound the trumpet because when you try to work something up, you take away from the good you take away from the original because that's what the devil does he uses the counterfeit to put you off the real thing and when people are, are counterfeiting something it makes the it cheapens the real thing and only those that have eyes to see and ears to hear will know what's real and what isn't real and i'm telling you god wants us this season is coming into a season of humility a season of humbling it will seem like ministries are being humiliated, but no, it's just a matter that they are being humbled so that God gets the glory. Jesus is uplifted, and Jesus said, if I be uplifted, I will draw all men unto me. Very important, church. Very important. So, there it is. That's, that's really, really what I wanted to share with you. Thomas got a bad name, didn't he? Got a bad name and still has. Oh, Downton Thomas. No, no. Devoted Thomas. No. Revelation Thomas. That was the first disciple to recognize that Jesus was the Son of God.
Amen? Amen. But he questioned, and there's nothing wrong in questioning. Nothing wrong in questioning a move of God. Nothing wrong in questioning a manifestation. Nothing wrong in it. But don't try and work it out. Just put it on the back boiler if you don't understand it. And don't try and don't try and copy to be part of the flow. Do you understand what I mean? Be yourself. Be yourself. As Gene used to say, I'm not you know, be in a room with five hundred people people doing courtesy drops. You know what a courtesy drop is? It's when the preacher comes along, they lay hands and they go down themselves because they want to fit in with the crowd. Jesus said, Gene said, I don't do courtesy drops. She could be in a room with 500 and be the only one standing. And it doesn't mean that she hasn't received from God. Hmm. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> There we go. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Ding dong, boing, hey and a ho. <laughs> test all things, Shana. Yes, test all things. Test. Don't just clap because somebody says I went to the moon and back. Test it. Ask for the proof. <laughs> Amen. If you can be offended, you will be offended. Dead people can't be offended. Thank you, Barbara, for that quote. Wonderful quote. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Okay, we've got to go. We've got to go to the reading. And uh, I, I've got to go. I've got, I've got people to see, places to go. Ding-dongs and boings and haze and hoes. Okay, number four. I've got the ding dong want you <laughs> Okay, let go. Uh, is the theme. Let me just zoom this in a little bit. That's it. Let go and believe. Beloved, I want you to submit your thoughts to the revelation of the cross. You cannot think your way into salvation, nor can you mentally comprehend my power. The power that lives inside of you for too long. Whoops, Daisy, just bear with me. For too long, you've tried to understand how to get a breakthrough, how to overcome the enemy, or how to see the sick healed through your hands. Instead, I simply want you to let go and believe. Come like a child, free, uninhibited. Believe beyond the confines of your brain. That's why I was crucified at the place of the skull, to pierce your mindsets with the power of my resurrection life and with revelation power that is much higher than the mental ascent of the world's greatest geniuses. You mustn't lean into your wisdom, but instead radically accept what is unconventional yet true. I am outside of time, space and rationalism. I am in you, with you, all around you. I hold the universe, yet can fit all of my glory inside you. Isn't that wonderful? Nothing about me makes sense to your limited understanding. So stop trying to figure it all out and enjoy the adventure. Amen. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. Isaiah 59 verse 9. Wow, 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 wow. Amen, amen, amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen, amen, amen. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, Scott. I see you joined us earlier on. Kimo, we need to adjust our receiver to the frequency of God. There's a thought for today, isn't it? That's a good, it's a good one, Kimo. Good thought for today. Amen. The Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and grant you Shalom, shalom. Don't forget, 
We only have four nights this week. We finish our last one on Thursday. No meetings, no broadcast on Friday. God bless everybody. God bless.